the uh, teams that are in, the teams that are out, and I asked this question this morning. Has this been a good tournament? And before you say, well, it's March Madness. Yes, been exciting. I'm just asking as we head into the Sweet 16, would you say this has been a good tournament, great tournament, exciting tournament, or a little disappointing? Because I think we're looking for that surprise. If Oakland had made it to the Sweet 16, then we would probably say, boy, this has been a great tournament. NC State, it's hard to look at NC State and say, wow, Cinderella story. You're in a Power 5 conference, but NC State is your Cinderella story. For the most part, you got your uh, top four seeds, and then the next four seeds, and then you got two of your number three seeds that are in there. So a lot of chalk. And last year, I think if you totaled up the seeds in the Final Four, it was 23. We're probably not going to have anywhere near that this year. And that's why I said I would definitely take the under this year. Felt like we were top-heavy, and it's certainly playing out that way that we're top-heavy. But uh, North Carolina, Arizona, Purdue, Connecticut, Duke, those are blue bloods advancing. Houston barely advances. Uh, Then you lose some of these other schools, but, you know, Michigan State, Kansas. Oakland was a big loss, and they had an opportunity to win that game. Baylor going out. I don't know if anybody is disappointed in any of those moments there. But if you look at the schools that are still left, and this is what we do every year, and I bring it up every year. We love crazy, chaotic March Madness until we get to the Elite Eight, and then we want the good schools to be there. Because what other sport do you go, man, we want a surprise? Okay, you want a surprise until that surprise gets blown out. And I think if you have that 11 seed, and we always have a double-digit seed making this, uh, you know, to the Sweet 16. But then we get to the point where, you know, you don't want to have that terrible national title game where you go, oh, this isn't really reflective of how the season was or the sport is. We like chaos until we don't. And then we go, cute story, now go away, now let the big boys play. And that's the feeling that you get this year. We're letting the big boys play. The average margin of victory in the tournament might surprise you. It's 15.4 points, second highest through the first two rounds since the tournament expanded, and uh, that was 1985. Stat of the day, stat of the day, stat of the day, stat of the day. Here comes that what? Stat of the day. But you've had Purdue win by 39, Duke win by 38. I mean, these are big numbers. Uh, Five teams have scored at least 100 points. You had Houston, Alabama, Purdue, Florida, Colorado. That's the most that we've had since 1989. So there is... Woo! Ah! Stat of the day! Stat of the day! Stat of the day! Stat of the day! This is the stat of the day! Also, with college basketball, and it'll sound strange to say this, you can get away with having a big man. Because in the NBA, the big man may be a liability if he acts like a traditional big man. In college basketball, I mean, Zach Eady, he is a man amongst boys. And he has played unbelievably well. Uh, DJ Burns at NC State, he's a big guy. I mean, you know, UConn has a couple of big guys. You can get away with that because in the NBA, I mean, Zach Eady came back. Player of the year came back because he had to work on his game to try to play in the NBA. I don't know if he's going to be a successful NBA player, probably going to be on a roster. Uh, But you're getting these players that you could. And I still think it comes back to a lot of this is, you know, you want to have control. College basketball, you can still have control. You get to the NBA, it's a little tougher to have control. You run your offense. Danny Hurley wants his team to run its offense, and they run it really well. Pick and roll, you're not shooting threes, and you know that's old school basketball. It's almost like uh, Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. He's playing old school football. Well, Danny Hurley playing old school basketball, and it's successful. Purdue, now they'll, they'll shoot the three, but you still have your big man. Uh, NC State, you know, you have your big man. 
and you're and they've advanced. But normally you would think that the big man is, you know, not going to be that much of a difference maker. But I mean, Zach Eady does look like a difference maker for Purdue. Uh, double double in the first half of both of his tournament games so far. And, you know, you're looking at these numbers, at least 20 and three blocks in three straight tournament games. Last person to do that was Shaq. But we haven't had these kind of big men. You know, they play on the perimeter. They don't want to be down low. Zach Eady plays down low. And Purdue, still alive, number one seed, and taking advantage of that. All right. Uh, Seaton, what's poll question today? We got a couple options for you, Dan. Uh, If you could watch... The, only the remainder of one tournament. Would you watch the rest of the men's or the women's? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark, she had some comments this weekend. Yeah. About how the women's tournament is just... In fact, this is what she said. There we go. I don't know. There's been like a lot of little moments, I think. Um, I think just the crowds at our games, but also just like the people screaming and like wanting our autographs, like like people just scream my name constantly. And I think that's something that really never gets old or something you never take for granted. I think um, I think that's the coolest thing. But I think also just in general, like the excitement around this tournament, like it's super cool. Like people are more excited about the women's side than the men's side. And I think that's obviously something that's really never been the case before. And it's cool to see how it's evolved. Like when I first started this, when I was a freshman, like we couldn't even use the March Madness branding and now to see this and really it's it's just taken a whole nother level and I continue it I expect it to continue to grow this year and I think that's the coolest thing for myself yes do you have somebody that you know and that's important because if I said the men's tournament who do you know all right you may know Zach Eady but I'm talking about the casual basketball fan casual basketball fan knows about LSU Angel Reese Kim Mulkey Kim Mulkey uh, certainly getting a little more recognition here in the last couple of days with a Washington Post article that will be coming out, I guess, during the tournament. But uh, Kim Mulkey said that uh, she has the best defamation lawyer and she's going to sue the Washington Post. I don't think the Washington Post will be intimidated by this since they did take down a president many, uh, many, many years ago. But uh, Kim Mulkey doing her best Bob Knight. And she's going to try to push back and bully this reporter who is a uh, well-respected reporter, writer, who's been working on this story for two years. But you do have some storylines here. And I think that's the South Carolina. Do they go undefeated? Connecticut's still in there. Uh, Paige Beckers, Gina Oriema. There's some name recognition there. But, you know, it's still the men's tournament. Uh, you know, it's still special, but I would say the storylines with the women's tournament would make that probably more must-see TV. I think more a more diverse audience is going to be curious about the women's tournament than the men's tournament. And you'll watch the men's because you filled out a bracket. I don't know how many people filled out a bracket for the women's tournament. But the bracket challenge, we probably should have filled out you know, brackets for the women's tournament as well. But... I'm looking at the results so far of the uh, bracket challenge here that we have. Jim Beheim is in first place. <laughs> He's going to win the tournament. Second place is Todd Fritz and Kevin Frazier. Who, by the way, Todd is always right up at the top. Every single year, he's right up at the top. I do go with a lot of chalk, so I can't take too much credit, but I do take a couple of 12 fives or 11 sixes, but uh, I do stick to chalk a lot. Thank you, Todd. You're welcome. Good to have you back. <laughs> Good to be back. Good to have you back. Played it safe. Yeah. Had a nice long weekend. Uh, at the bottom <laughs> at the bottom of the bracket challenge, you'll find Marvin, Rebecca Lowe, Seton O'Connor, Seton, and myself tied for uh, 15th. Right by your yeah. side, buddy. Hey, I got you, man. Right by your yeah. side. Yeah. Once again, proving that the more you know, the worse you do. That's it. Yeah. Obviously. Okay. <laughs> 